pool on Wednesday, and we'll hang out and do anime-related things until 3.25. Hope to see you there. There's a lunch meeting today in the library for students interested in the volunteer program at the Alfredford Regional Hospital. There will be a key club meeting at lunch in the library conference room. Secondary Fire Academy. If you are in grade 11 or 12 and are interested in an exciting career in firefighting, please come to the library at lunch on Thursday, September the 27th for a meeting with Mr. Grell. Could Annalise Mike and Addison Trotka please come to the office for a pickup? Just a reminder for those of you that haven't picked up your report cards from June, please come to the office and pick them up. Any Aboriginal students who would like to join us on the Orange Shirt Day Walk this Friday, please pick up your permission form in room A210. Any grade 11 and 12 Aboriginal students who would like to join us on the field trip to the Museum of Anthropology in Vancouver, please pick up a permission form in room A210. Get your study of humans. Models are needed for the hair show and other events. If you are interested, please come to the model call at Hair Studio 34 in room A100 today at 2.30. If you work, volunteer, or plan on doing so, you can earn up to eight credits. See Mr. Kleisinger in A106 for more information. There will be a short home room at the end of the day today. Teachers, uh, you have photos and ID cards in your mailboxes, which should be distributed to your home room. Reminder to Matt Golden, Robert Brownie, and Matthew Brownie that you have passed today. And we have student announcements as well. Good morning, Panthers. Abby Intramural Pinball is starting next week. And you know it, we need you to find six other friends to create an ultimate group to try to win the handball tournament happening next week starting Monday. Come down to the rotunda this week during lunch to sign up. Good luck. Handball is one of my all-time favorite sports. It is. It should be a big deal in Canada like it is in Europe. Because it's... In, uh, you in Europe, there's professional Thank handball you. leagues because it's awesome. I mean, what? I, everyone's like, uh, handball's so lame. How's it different from basketball? It's exactly the same as basketball, but it's better because there's a goalie. Huh? Yeah, you're right. It's really hard to score when there's no defense. What's the score in an average NBA basketball game? 100 to 98. Scoring's really difficult. They only score 50 times a game, each team. Scoring so hard. Man, I don't know how you could play a game where you score 50 times. 50 times a game. There are basketball players that have scored, single players, 100 points in a game. You're going to tell me scoring's that difficult? There are hockey players that haven't scored 100 goals in their entire career. And there are basketball guys that score 100 points in one game. You're right. Handball's slow. Handball is wicked awesome. And it should be super popular here. But it's not. I don't know why it isn't. That's all I'm saying. It's got everything basketball does and more. What's the more? It's actually difficult to score. Because there's only goals like 10-5 is a good game of handball. All right. Everybody understands this, yes? Every single one of you understands that the base is the shape that repeats. And every single one of you understands that the height is the direction that shape goes. Yes? All right. So then this question should have been no problem for anybody. Where does, what are the shapes that make this up? There's this rectangle up top. Does it repeat anywhere? No, because the one at the bottom has a slant. So it can't be the top. What about that? No, because this one is longer than that. So that shape doesn't repeat. So I've already covered the side and the top. What's the only side left? The front. Well, if this doesn't repeat to the left, then the one on the right doesn't repeat. This is the only shape that repeats, yes? So that must be the base. 
8, 1, 15, right? What two shapes make up this shape? A triangle and a rectangle. Are you in the 10th grade going to tell me that you cannot tell me the area of a rectangle and a triangle? Because if you are, then it's going to be a long year because I got to go back to grade 2 and reteach all of that before we get to grade 10. What is the area of this rectangle? Length times width. What's the length of this rectangle? 15. 15. What's the width? So how big is this rectangle? 15. If this is 1, then what is this? This is 15 and this is 7. So now I have a triangle, 7 by 15. What is the area of every single triangle? You've used one of it in the rectangle. The whole side is 8. When you take out 1, you're left with... Oh, sorry, I drew that backwards. 7 by 15. What's the area of that? 7 by 15, which is 105, divided by 2, which is 52.5. So if the rectangle is 15 and the triangle is 52.5, what is the area of both of them put together? 67.5. Area of the base is 67.5. What is the height? The direction the base repeats. What is it? Six. Six. To get 405. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Honestly, it's a rectangle and a triangle, yes? Mm -hmm. Right? Should this have given you that much trouble? Absolutely not. You people overthink it. I cannot help you with your lawyer balling, right? You guys argue your way out of... You sit there and you're like, I don't know. Eh, eh. Try something. It might work. Does this work? I don't know what to write. It could be this. It could be that. I don't know. Does that get you anywhere? No. no. If you are hungry and there is a fridge full of food, does standing in front of the fridge going, I don't know what to cook, get any food in your belly? No. no. Pick something up and cook it. Got it? <laughs> like, I, I don't know what to do to help you with this question. You all knew how to do it, but a bunch of you didn't even try. So, is it really 405? No, no because we're only filling it 85%. So I have to multiply that by 0.85. And that gets you 344.25 meters cubed. Yes? That is what you have. Now, we're in a bit of trouble here. Because... The next question says we're using centimeters cubed, yes? This is meters cubed, isn't it? So I must convert meters cubed to centimeters cubed. Yeah? Yeah. How do I do that? How do meters convert to centimeters? What do I multiply by? A hundred. But since it's meters cubed, I must multiply by 100 how many times? Three times. So I got 344.25 times 100. That covers one dimension, doesn't it? Now I've got to cover a second dimension, don't I? Then I've got to cover a third dimension, don't I? To get every zero, I move the decimal place. How many zeros is that? One, two, six. three, four, five, six. So this has to move six decimal places. What goes in the holes? Zeros. So three, forty, four, two, five. There's two decimal places. Then I need four more, yes? So four zeros. Everybody cool with that? Does everybody actually understand this? The conversion of one meter to 100 centimeters only happens on a straight line. 
if you've, one sec, Ariana, if you've got squared, then you've got to convert two lines. If you've got cubed, one, two, three of depth. Does everybody get it? Yeah. All right. Now go. Well, then it would be divide by 100, divide by 100, divide by 100. Everybody cool to there? Yeah. All right. So this is centimeters cubed now. Does everyone agree? Except I do not need centimeters cubed. I need liters, don't I? So I need to convert to liters. Now, right here it says one liter is 1,000 centimeters, right? So I want liters, don't I? So I, one liter is 1,000 centimeters cubed because that's what I have, yeah? Where's the one? On the top. So is this divide or multiply? It's divide. I'm getting rid of three zeros. So how many zeros do I get rid of here? Three zeros. What's left? 344,250 liters. Now, does that make sense? This is one liter. Can you imagine filling this 350,000 times? And that might fill a pool. Maybe. Of course you wouldn't do it that way. You'd put a hose in it that filled it faster. Everybody understand? Because some people have 34 here because they don't convert properly. What you are saying to me then is you think 34 of these will fill a pool. And that makes no sense, does it? It wouldn't even put a puddle on the whole bottom of the pool. I know how big the puddles this class makes because I have a water fountain outside my hall. Everybody with me? All right. Now, there was a 10 gummy bear prize for number two. I will take some answers now of anybody who wishes to give one. I, one person already won yesterday. They have abdicated the gummy bears, so it is still up for grabs. Tobby. Okay, so 19,261 pucks. Cool. What do you got? 12,168 pucks. What do you got? How much? 162.2. What else? Nobody else wants to risk it? You, you, what's the worst that happens? Geo. 2,232. Gervier? Are you giving me your phone number? 1623 isn't a number. That's four digits. We're in math class. What is 1623? 263. 263. Okay. Diego? 4,829. Anybody else? 15,642. Dan? 5,720. Pardon me? 25. Gia? 4,896. That's Geo's second guess. <laughs> this is not an auction. <laughs> Have you guys seen that episode of Friends where Joey bought the boat? Yeah. It's 20,000 to Joey Dribbiani. I won! All right. Anybody else? Okay. None of those are correct. Mm, really? Which one is close enough, Dan? The 162 or the 19,000? Because those are not numbers that are close to each other. I don't think someone would have the energy to throw 19,000 into it. Okay. The real answer, let's talk about it. I'm going to draw the net red. I'm going to erase my Please. Does everybody agree that that's what the net looks like? Yeah. From the front. Is everybody cool? Yes. Okay. So this is the front. Everyone agree? That will take two dimensions, won't it? I can fill it with pucks across here, right? 
and I can fill it with pucks up. Everyone agree? Yeah. Okay. So if I know how many pucks fit in the front of the net, that would be the base, wouldn't it? And I could multiply that by the height, which would go back this way. Everyone agree? Everyone cool? So there's also pucks going back that way. Does everybody agree with me? Okay, now, is this volume or surface area? Volume, because I'm filling the net, yes? What shape are pucks? Cylinders. Do circles fill rectangles? No, what do they leave? Empty space. So could you do the volume of the net divided by the volume of the pucks? No, not unless you're going to melt the pucks down into liquid and pour them into the net because there is empty space. Agreed? So how wide is this net? 1.83, yeah? Meters. So is everybody cool if I make that 183 centimeters? I'm just going across the front. Everyone agree? How big is a puck? Read the question. 7.62 centimeters, yes? So what am I dividing this 183 into? Chunks of how big? 7.62. So that will give me 183 times, not times, you idiot, divided by 7.62. That means I can put 24 pucks across here. Everyone agree? Okay. Now, each of those pucks going across there is a circle, yeah? So there's going to be empty space, yes? Okay, how many pucks up can I go? How tall is this net? 122, right? How tall is a puck? So what do I divide this 122 by? 2.54. 122 divided by 2.54 gets me... Gets me 48 pucks. 48. So I've got 24 across here, and I've got 48 up the side, yes? So how many pucks will fill up the front? What do I do with those two numbers? 48 plus 24? It's area, 48 times 24. 1,152, correct? That's the whole front of the net would be 1,152 pucks, yeah? Mm -hmm. But I can stack pucks backwards, can't I? How far back do I go? 100 centimeters divided by how, how wide is the puck? No, 2.4, 7.62. So how many pucks can I fit back going backwards? How many pucks go back this way? 13. 13. So I've got 1,152 pucks at the front, and I can make that rectangle 13 back. So what do I do with that? Times 13. And what's the answer? 14,970. That's the answer. That's the answer. Who was 15,642? Oh. If only you'd said it. I know. Then you'd have 10 gummy bears. But some, when it, somebody else might. You could have bought like 10 friends. All right. Everybody understand? Now listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me, please, 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 everyone listen to me. Is this a real life question? Obviously not. Does this question have a real life value? Yes, it does. Because how many of you didn't, as soon as you see it, you're all like, nah. In real life, do you sometimes have to do things? Yes. Are they sometimes things you have to think about? Yes. Are they sometimes things where you have to apply knowledge in a new way? Yes. yes. So it has plenty of real life value. Right? Everybody cool with why you have to think of the surface area 
and the volume at the same time. Yeah. All right. Now, it's recording. Everybody cool? All right. How many people actually attempted this problem? Good. Where on a can does the label go? Around it. Only here. It's surface area. The surface area of cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, right? Is there any paper going on the circles? No. So it's just 2 pi r h, correct? Because the paper only goes around the side. There's no paper on the top and bottom, is there? Why is the 2 pi r squared? Because the 2 pi r squared covers the top and bottom. A cylinder has two circles. But I asked where the paper is going. Okay. Only on the sides. Okay. Everybody cool? So it's 2 pi or H, right? But how many cans am I making? 100,000. So what's 100,000 times 2? 200,000 pi R H, right? What is R? 4.25. What is H? 12, right? 12 times 4.25 is 102 times 200,000, right? That's a radius, half of the diameter. Uh, Wait, uh, pi times 4.25 plus 12. I got 12 million. Yeah, it's a giant number, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Yikes. So, hold it a second. Let's leave it as pi, can't we? 200,000 times 4.25 times 12 is 102 and then five zeros pi is everybody okay with that yeah. everyone's cool and that is centimeters cubed yes we're gonna stop there because we're gonna do something with it because this is in centimeters oh it's centimeters squared i'm yeah, sorry like thank you ariana it is squared Everybody cool? Yeah. Now, I want to cover my walls with soup cans. It's a, stup it's a stupid math class question Seriously. that makes you think. Now, let's stop for a second. If I wanted to actually do this in real life, I would need measurements of the classroom, wouldn't I? And look at this classroom. It has this wall, right, times how many? Nice wall. No, one, two, right? Two. It has this wall, giant, right there, and there's one of them, yes? And then it has this wall where the windows are, and there's one of them, agreed? So yes, it's a stupid math class question. I couldn't agree with you more, except that it makes you do exactly what you need to do in real life. Break something down to what you need to work with. Yes? This is a rectangle, so it's just length times width. This is a rectangle, so it's just length times width. What's this? No. It's a rectangle and a triangle. Isn't it? Everybody cool? Okay, now, if I were going to cover the walls, would I measure them in square centimeters? No, that would be idiotic, wouldn't it? What would I measure the walls in? Meters. Did I give you any measuring devices? No, and I said to estimate. Have we discussed estimating meters? Why do we use symmetrical walls? Because that would be easy. Have we discussed estimating meters? Yeah, we have. There it is, right there, and I got video of it. One meter is about a step. Right? So, how big is our classroom? If you walked it, you would know. Right? 
let's say for argument's sake that our class is 10 by 10. We'll make it easy on ourselves, yes? So all the bottoms here are 10 by 10 by 10, yes? Everyone agree? Now, do you think from that corner to the low point of the triangle is also about 10? No. So you, you, what do you want to say? 20? 20 to the low point of the triangle. You think it's shorter. Well, then look there, right above you, where the low point of the triangle is. You want to call it 8? So, to the low point of the triangle is 8, which makes that 8. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. What about to the high point of the triangle? You think it's double? Okay. Let's go with double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you think this is all 16, yes? Right? Yeah. Which means that part is 8, and what's this part? Four. Well, we said the whole thing was 16 because it was doubled. So, this is also 8, Yes? Everybody with me? Okay. What is this area? 80. 80. What is this area? No, it's 16 all the way up there, you guys said. 160. What's this area in the bottom? 80. And what's this up here? Eight, 10 by 80, but it's triangle. So it's 40. So this wall is 120, yes? But there's two of them. So it's 240. Everybody cool? So what do I do with 240, 80, and 160? Add it up to get 480 meters squared. Does everyone agree? Everyone agrees? What did I measure this in? Centimeters squared. I have 480 meters squared, don't I? How do I convert meters squared to centimeters? How do I convert meters to centimeters? I want, I want centimeters. I have meters, right? That covers how many dimensions of conversion? One. I've only done one conversion, right? So then I got to do how many dimensions? So I got to do it again, don't I? So I got to do 480 times 100 times 100 to get my centimeters squared, yes? So what is it? 480 times 100 squared is 4.8 million. Well, 4 million 800,000 is 4.8 million. No. It's 4,800,000. Yes? Centimeters cubed. Agreed? I have enough paper to cover that, don't I? So what do I do with that number and this? There's only four math. There's only four kinds of math. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Which one am I doing? Add them, divide. You can't just say all four. Everybody stop. I have this much space to cover, yep. and I have this much paper to cover it. Is it add, subtract, multiply, or divide? I have a calculate. I have a desk. I have calculators to cover it. Divide, because I am dividing this area into how many calculators will fit on it. So I divide by a hundred and two. And five zeros, pi. So I do 4.8 million, which I've got on my calculator, divided by, and I have to use brackets, how many times can I cover the walls? Cool. How much of the walls? It's not one, is it? I can't even cover the walls once. So how much of the walls can I cover when you do that math? 0. 0.14 0. 
of my walls. That's all I could cover. It is, but they're in centimeters. Meters are gigantic. Now, why am I showing you this? Look at this. I've got it written right here on purpose. One meter in green, one by one. That's a meter squared, right? In red, centimeters, 100 times 100 is what? No. 100 times 100. 10,000. One meter squared equals 10,000 centimeters squared. Everybody understand? Okay. Let's move it along, cabbages. Okay, thank you for calling me a cabbage. It's a joke. No, they're gross. All right. Now, what measurement of this front wheel will transfer to a distance along the ground? The circumference, yes? If I start rolling right now and that bike rolls this way, once it's gone around that circumference, it will stop, yes? So all I need is a circumference. Circumference, if you look on your data book, is pi times d, yes? Uh, uh, yeah, pi times d. So what is the d of the front wheel? 52. So circumference equals 52 pi, Yes? Everyone cool with that? Yeah. Now, I need that in feet and inches. So what do I do with 52 and pi to get my first answer? 52, 52, pi. 52 times pi, which gives you what? 163.36 inches, correct? But I want feet and inches. So what do I do? I want feet first, don't I? So I want feet, so feet goes on the top or the bottom? One foot over 12 inches. Everybody agree? That's going to get me my feet, yes? What is that? 13.61. So I'm going to go at least 13 feet, aren't I? But then I've got 0.61 of a foot left over, don't I? So I do 0.61 of a foot. And what do I want to convert that feet to? Inches times 12 inches over one foot. What is 0.61 times 12? 7. So 7 inches. Everyone agree? Now, when you write it out, it makes perfect sense. Inches to feet. There's my full feet. My leftover feet to inches. If you don't write it out, it becomes difficult, doesn't it? And yet, if I were to walk around today, I would find a whole whack of people that didn't write anything out. Wouldn't I? Yeah. Now, since I know it's 163.36 inches, and I want meters and centimeters, so what should I go to first? Why is it in centimeters? Because we already did. It's 52 inches times pi. We already did the inches right here. Oh, so I need to go to what? If you go straight to centimeters, it's super easy because you just move the decimal twice, right? So 163.36, and I want centimeters, and I have inches. One inch is how many centimeters? 2.54. Multiply or divide? Multiply. What is it? Pardon me? 5, 4. It's the same thing it's been every time we've done a conversion. It's written on your sheets, guys. But they're written on your sheet. Okay. 414.96. Right? So it's really 415 centimeters, isn't it? But I want it in meters and centimeters, so how far did that decimal move? Two spots to get 4 meters and 15 centimeters. Everybody good? Yeah. Now, how many times must I turn that front wheel to travel one kilometer? 
Well, I know the front wheel in feet and inches, and I know the front wheel in meters and centimeters. Which one works better with kilometer? Meters. So I'm in kilometers now. Can I compare kilometers to meters and centimeters? I can, but I got to do something to that kilometer first, don't I? I got to make it a thousand. One thousand divided by what? 4.15 equals how many times do I have to turn that front wheel? 240-ish. I can't remember the exact number, but whatever. It's close enough. Because what's more important here? Which part of this makes me happier? That part, because you recognize that conversion and you recognize that conversion. Does your rounding off really matter to me? No. No. Because you should already know how to do that. And yet still, every day, I don't know how to round. But I have to, I have to let some things go in order to get through math 10. What about the smaller wheel? I already know how to do it, don't I? Smaller wheel is 18 inches, yes? So it's 18 pi inches, correct? So 18 pi, I want centimeters, so it's got to be 2.54, yes? Over 1. So it's a multiply situation, right? That's going to get me my centimeters, yes? Don't trust me on this. So I know I've got to do that, yes? But then I need to get the centimeters, don't I? How do I get from centimeters to meters? Is it multiply or divide by 100? I divide that by 100, and that's going to get me my meters, yes? So all of that is what's going to go down there, correct? So can I do this on my calculator in one shot? Yeah, as long as I use what? Brackets. Bracket there, bracket there. On your calculator, 18. If you need to push times, you would push times. 18 pi times 2.54, bracket, bracket, divided by 100 equals. And that's going to give you an answer on your calculator. 18 times pi times 2.54, divided by 100, gets you 1.436, blah, 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 right? Your calculator screen is full now, Yes. Now, I'm going to give you, I've already given you this gift in the past. I'm going to give it to you again. Bracket 18 pi times 2.54. Close brackets divided by 100 equals. Screen full, yes? Now, because I have shown my work, I know it's 1,000 divided by that number, yes? Yes? So on my work, I'm going to write 1.436, even though it's actually this giant number. That's just there to hold my brain, yes? On my calculator, I know it's 1,000 divided by... Now, look on your calculator. I've given you this gift before. Does everybody have an ANS key? It might be a shift like I have. I go shift ANS, and that ANS is this last answer. The calculator holds it in its memory. Answer, ANS. So now 100 divided by my last answer equals 696 turns of the wheel. Yep. Look at the, look above the equal sign. So you push the green button. Alpha? Alpha answer. So 1,000 divided by alpha answer. Equals 696. But you need... But you needed that answer first. You needed this part first. Okay? Everybody cool? All right, your quiz... For some reason, you people feel you cannot do a quiz unless you know how long it is. It is five, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven calculations that you need to do. It is not seven questions. You will need to do seven calculations to get there. Okay? I am going to give you 18 minutes. But first, I'm going to give you three minutes to talk to your neighbor or me about any issues you may have with surface area. Then I will give out the quiz and I will give you 18 minutes. Listen to me, please. I do not want to say this again. If you are not done at the end of 18 minutes, which is about five times as long as you should need, because it's only seven calculations, what does that tell me? That you don't know what you're doing. Do quizzes hurt you? No. So if you still don't finish this in 18 minutes, what must you do between now and Thursday when I give you your test? Study and practice. Got it? Now, one sec. You get your data sheet. You get your calculator. You get a pencil and an eraser. We are going to mark the quiz today. If you do not have the work correct, you need to make corrections, yes? If you erase all your work and just write down the proper way to do it, will you know where you went wrong? No. No. So leave enough space somewhere where you can take a couple of notes if you're wrong. Everybody with me? Do not do this quiz like you are a grade three boy with your pencil in your fist. Make it neat, make it tidy, so you can have some room to make corrections. Clear? Excellent. Now, last thing. When you come to your test, you will get the whole period. The test is something like 14 questions. There are five or seven multiple choice. I'm going to give you the whole period. Right? Okay. Now, if you finish your quiz before 18 minutes is up, you look in your book and you see on the next page, which for you people should be page 42, from 42 to 46 is review. 42 to 46. You have the rest of today, all day in class tomorrow until you people are in here right before lunch, until, or right after lunch, until 12.40 tomorrow in class to get all of that done. Because at 12.40, we are going to mark it. Now listen to me and listen to me carefully. If the third question boggles your mind beyond your ability to do it. You look at it for three, four minutes. You're like, I have no idea what to do here. Do you stop? No. You go to the next question. Let's say the 26th question does the same thing to you. Do you stop? No. You go to the next question. Because leaving something blank says what to me? You don't know how to do it. If there were 15 questions on a test, the first one caused you grief, you stop working, what do you get on that test? Zero. Zero. What, do you, what happens if the next 14 you can do easily? You get 14 out of 15. What's better? 14 out of 15. Right? And because I'm giving you the rest of today's period, all night tonight, and 60 minutes of tomorrow's block, is there any excuse for this not to be done by 1240? Of course not. Everybody good? Wait, the test will be Thursday. You have three minutes to talk and prepare for your small quiz. Go. Always do. I only said keep them.
get a picture of the question two on page 39 so I can put in my book. You've got your book. No, so I can like write the work in my book. But I did all the work. Why didn't you write it out when I was doing it on the tape? Oh, because you were talking to Gervier. Right, sorry. That's my fault. Go sit down. Watch the tape. What? Sharpener? Right over there. What? I'm going to be on Thursday, so can I do this on Friday? Sure. I'm doing it twice. I already said sure. Okay. Wait.